uh, as we do each day, um, we will continue updating any change in case numbers at Ohio's two veterans home on our website, coronavirus.ohio.gov. So today uh, we're going to talk uh, about sports. I know a much anticipated uh, subject by uh, many people uh, throughout the state. Um, I thought we would talk, first talk uh, with Dr. Jim Borchers. Uh, Dr. Borchers uh, has had extensive experience um, in working in this particular area uh, at, at Ohio State University. And uh, doctor, are you on here yet? Eric, is he, is he here? I am here. He's up. Doctor, thank you so very, very much for um, joining us. And I know you've worked with athletes at, at Ohio State. And I wonder maybe if you could just kind of start off by telling us what, what you have learned. I mean, I know that we continue, uh, the medical community continues to learn more as we move forward with COVID and have more experiences and it's an evolving situation. And maybe just kind of share with us some of the things that, that, that you have seen uh, in your, at your work uh, at Ohio State uh, in general and your work with, with the athletes. Well, Governor, thanks for having me today and uh, very happy to be here. You know, our uh, experience has uh, allowed us really to study the effect of COVID and, it, and its effects uh, not only on athletics, but on sport and participation. And I think probably the first thing that we've learned is that uh, the health of the community around our athletes is of utmost importance to our athletes being able to compete. Um, when we are able to provide our athletes with a healthy environment um, and are able to have them follow the basic behaviors that uh, we've all been asked to follow around this virus, which is appropriate uh, social distancing um, and uh, good hygiene, face mask, and following proper procedures uh, in and around the sport facilities and uh, around conducting athletics, um, that uh, that makes a makes a large difference for us. When the community does not have a healthy environment, when we see a large infectivity rate, we have found that uh, uh, it's more difficult and we struggle sometimes to have uh, uh, athletics and sport and organized sport. So I think that is probably first and foremost the most important thing. And I think the second thing we've uh, you know, known, and I think everyone knows, is just how important athletics and sport is to our mental health and well-being, and uh, how important it is that we all join in together to allow sports to occur. Well, that's great. And uh, Doctor, I, I apologize. I, I kind of rushed into this. I was anxious to hear from you. I didn't really give you the, the proper introduction, but let me just do it uh, for everyone. Uh, Dr. Borchardt specializes in sports medicine at the Wexner Medical Center. Uh, he's some firsthand experience as a former Ohio State football player from 1989 to 1993. We'll give your age away, I guess, there, Doctor. Getting old. There you go. He was inspired to be a doctor in part by his physicians who cared for him when he was a, a student athlete. So, doctor, thank you very, very much. Uh, we have heard, doctor, um, uh, one of the things that is in the order that we're uh, putting out today uh, talks about uh, myocarditis, but also sudden uh, cardiac arrest, which I know um, has been something that I think people have been concerned about for a long time. Uh, I, I remember years ago um, having seen that tragedy reported one night for a UD basketball player. Um, uh, I, have a, I have a good friend uh, of mine uh, from the Congress whose son died uh, at a very, very young age playing, playing college uh, basketball uh, from, from that. So. Maybe you could start with that and then talk how those two are maybe are, are, are related or not related, but just some things that uh, coaches and, and athletic directors and, and everyone else connected with sports maybe should, maybe should think about. Sure. Well, I think, uh, as you mentioned, uh, sudden cardiac death in athletes is a tragic event, uh, and it uh, uh, fortunately is a very rare event. Um, it's not something that's common, but something that we almost always hear some uh, reports of uh, and uh, uh, really requires vigilance on preparation. So all our great athletic trainers around the state of Ohio that are providing excellent emergency care, um, our CPR training and the use of a 
um, automated external defibrillator are really the ways that we can, you know, save lives. Um, and so even more important than screening is our preparation. And so uh, obviously I know our coaches, athletic trainers, medical staffs, administrators around the state really take a lot of great pride and have, have done a great job at instituting that. That being said, we know one of the risk factors for sudden cardiac death is infection of the heart or what you've mentioned, myocarditis, and uh, although not the most common cause, uh, can be a cause of sudden cardiac death and arrhythmia, certainly in athletes. And one of the things that we continue to study and look at with COVID-19 is its predilection for potentially affecting the heart with infection. And so uh, it's one of the issues that has been discussed quite a bit. It's one of the issues that we're learning quite a bit about and certainly that we want to remain vigilant for. But I think it highlights the need for, again, prevention for healthy communities and trying to allow, you know, rather than worrying about what we do when that occurs, which is a rare event, uh, how can we prevent it from occurring? And I think those are those things that uh, you and others have talked about in trying to allow our athletes to uh, compete in a healthy environment. So let's talk for a moment, uh, let's say an athlete uh, who has the symptoms of COVID um, let's just assume they're, t they're tested, um, comes back positive, um, athlete does not uh, exhibit, uh, you know, any kind of major problem, never has to go to the hospital, for example. Um, that person now hopes to come back and play. What, you're the doctor, what do you advise the, the, the coach, what do you advise the parents, what do you advise the athlete? Yeah, I think what I would advise everyone, Governor, is that that athlete, if they've been COVID positive, meets with their health care provider and makes certain that they have discussed, you know, the health risk and that they've had a complete assessment uh, uh, before they return to sport. And that may then, you know, be different for each uh, individual. And so certainly that could involve uh, not only an exam, but other cardiac testing, EKGs, echocardiograms, you know, um, lab work, other specialized cardiac tests and the use of a cardiac specialist if needed. But I think anyone who's had been COVID positive needs to meet with their healthcare provider, or seek out that advice um, before they return to activity to make certain that they understand also the signs and symptoms to watch out for shortness of breath, any chest discomfort, exercise fatigue, you know, a, a middle-aged runner who may be used to be able to run a eight minute mile that's now only able to run 12 or 13 minute miles. These are the things that might alert our healthcare providers to looking at something more specific. So not that we need to be, I think, overly uh, uh, scared of this uh, complication, but we need to be aware of it. Okay. Very, very good. I asked you this morning uh, a, a question. Uh, I said, if, if you had a child who uh, was wanting to play uh, contact sports this fall, uh, would you let them do it? Yeah, you did ask me that question, and I've, I've been asked that question quite a bit. And I have <laughs> uh, uh, two high school age boys who play sports, a daughter who was a very competitive athlete. And, and my response to you is the response I'm going to give now, and that I think that every individual needs to look at what's going on in their environment and kind of what their community looks like. If the infectivity rate of this virus is extremely high and, uh, uh, and we don't have the ability to test, I'd have some real concerns about letting my son play a contact sport. That being said, if I lived in a community where the infectivity rate is well controlled, where it's low, where I felt like uh, our community had embraced uh, the guidelines to allow the athletes to compete, in a healthy manner, then I would, you know, feel better about letting my son go forward. So I think it, you have to take into account what's going on in your local community, what's going on in your, you know, more extended community. Um, and I think that's why it's so incumbent on all of us to, to, you know, do the best we can to uh, prevent as much spread as possible. Okay, good. Doctor, thank you very, very much. One, maybe one last, last question. Um, uh, in regard to let's a situation where um, one of the athletes on a team um, comes down with, with COVID, and it's confirmed that student has COVID. What does that mean for the other athletes on that team, or what might it mean? I guess it's fact. I assume it's fact driven, pretty much here. But what what might that mean, or what what should happen? Let's sure. So I think I think first and foremost, we want to share information to prevent the you know unnecessary spread of that. So we want to make certain that um, that we make aware those aware that there could be a positive case. And then I think that's where contact tracing, as we've heard a lot about, becomes so important that 
we don't have an unnecessary um, shutdown, so to speak, of a large group of people that we have the ability to make certain that those close contacts uh, are appropriately notified and uh, follow CDC guidance and others on self-quarantine. The inability to do that or the inability to provide that information is probably going to lead to health departments recommending that entire groups of people, entire teams, or even entire leagues uh, potentially not participate uh, for a period of time, and that can be really disruptive to sports. So um, certainly that sort of communication is going to be really important and something that we need to be very vigilant about. Great. Doctor, thank you very, very much. We, we appreciate you. you being with us. Thank you. Thank you.